Now, one of the things we do a lot in this work, there's a course we do called Laws of Living, and in Laws of Living, we get into a thing we call regulatory speech. And regulatory speech is that the words that the mind uses to regulate our physiology, to regulate our creative process, and to regulate what we see in our world. And so that's called regulatory speech. And the, the words that people use create such an impact in their physiology, and most people don't recognize that their words have that kind of power. Yeshua gave it so much emphasis that he said, every idle word will be accounted for. Now, when we interact with people in laws of living, we, we actually play a game we call the regulatory peach game. It's kind of interesting how it got the name Regulatory Peaches. During the Laws of Living course at Heartland, our teaching center, we were doing this course, and there was a, a woman that was there with her three-year-old son. The little guy's name was Orion. And Orion was sound asleep on his blanket beside Mom, and, and for a good part of the day, we've been talking about regulatory speech, and Ryan's up, and he's coloring, and he's listening, and he goes to sleep, and... Finally, he's just waking up out of a sleep as we're getting ready to take an intermission. And someone has gone back into the kitchen and brought out a huge bowl of peaches for a snack. And Orion, kind of rubbing his eyes, wakes up and looks over at these peaches coming out and being placed on the food bar, which is in our classroom. And he says, just loud enough, of course, for everybody in the room to hear, Mom, are those regulatory peaches? Of course, we've been talking about regulatory speech all day. And so we call it the regulatory peach game. And what we do is we invite people to point out to each other the kinds of words that they use and the kinds of power phrases that they use. When people first start to play that game, they oftentimes become very upset because every other word out of their mouths relates to some form of hostility or fear. And oftentimes we'll see people when we, you know, we ask everybody's permission, are you willing to play this game? And oh yeah, it sounds great, sure, point my words out to me. But there comes a point where people are like, well, well, why don't you just let me talk? I can't say anything. You just keep, it's like, no, all we're doing is pointing out your words. And when people use words, they have no idea what kind of power those words have oftentimes. I remember working with a young man from uh, uh, one of the northern states. He had moved to Atlanta. He'd had a lot of challenges with his parents, and like he was out of there. He was not having anything to do with them. And one day his parents called and said they were on their way to Florida. They were coming through Atlanta and wanted to visit with him, spend some time with him. The first words out of his mouth were, my parents are a pain in the you-know-what. The day his parents arrived, he got hemorrhoids. The day his parents left, his hemorrhoids left. That's the power of our words. Watch how you communicate with yourself and that your communications toward yourself come through a mind with the lights on, where love is present. Because when you utilize hostile and fearful power phrases toward yourself, you can be creating things in your life that you really don't want to create. You can be creating things in your life you really don't want to create. And once you recognize that, then you start looking at those power phrases. Because what we know is we live in a world of energy. We don't live in a world of matter. And in this world of energy, the energies that we engage in determine how our world unfolds around us. For instance, if you watch people whose power phrases are things like, I can't stand that, what you'll find is people who end up with foot and leg problems. I can't stomach that. You'll see people oftentimes who have digestive problems. That's a pain in the neck or any other body part. And they end up with problems in that part of their structure because as an energetic system, the structure is always listening and giving a quality to the frequencies we engage in with our thoughts and with our words.